This is the first in our series of presentations entitled Eurocarp Quest. Kevin Maddox and friends will be exploring the lakes of Europe in search of the car. First destination is the lake at Fisherville in the centre of Brittany, where we join Kevin along with Alan Powerbring and Bob Baldock. Well, here we are at Fisherville in Brittany, all fresh France, and we've had quite a bit of action already. We've all caught fish, and we're really having some good fun. Like Bob's in. Colour mm. the belly. Mm. What's it about 12 pounds? Yeah, low double, isn't it? A lovely orange colour. He's fighting better now he's on the bank. And <laughs> 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 he was on the thing. Yeah, beautiful fish. Fish in there? Yeah, every carp's a nice fish in there. Yeah. Lovely. Beautiful. Well a beautiful fish. Or slipping back in. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> probably soak you now. Yeah. Got in the right direction. Yeah, beautiful fish. There he goes. Well done, mate. Having had a lovely breakfast and the pleasure of netting a fish for Bob. I'm now going to stay on my rods and see if I can catch a fish or two myself.
The three anglers took the overnight piano ferry to Cherbourg. In the ship's cafeteria, they discussed the forthcoming trip to Fisherbill, a renowned lake in central Brittany. Alan, on a previous visit, had caught numerous specimen fish there. On arriving at Fisherville, they were greeted by the proprietor, Raphael Faraguet, a well-known French carp angler and journalist. Over coffee in the center's bar, Raphael, with the aid of a large detailed wall map, explained the characteristics of the water and how the lake had been developed. At one time, a stream ran into the lake at one end and out at the other. This constituted flowing water, and by French law, under these circumstances, night fishing was banned. So, uh, to overcome this restriction, Raphael diverted the stream round the outside of the lake, and by so doing, overcame so the night ban. Centimeter of silt on that part, and as much as you go to the end of the lake, you have less silt. So here there is 10 centimeter of silt. Uh, all this bottom is very hard. There is some gravel bars, and it's quite hard on all that spot down there. Uh, this little channel is. Um, is there is some silt, about 50 centimeters of silt, and this hole down there at the beginning of the island has been big, and we have a very good dip. After the briefing by Raphael, a reconnaissance of the lake was essential. Kevin, Alan and Bob made a long methodical search for the best place to fish. They located a shallow bay area where the mud had been stirred up and although the grass protruded from the water there were obvious signs that the fish were in the area and feeding. They decided to bait the area heavily with maestro honey syrup and yellow bird spice boilies. Alan uses the cobra throwing stick for baiting. Kevin sticks to his catapult.
Bob usually uses a catapult, but tried the cobra stick and was most impressed. Fisherbill is a very prolific water and on Alan's previous visit with his friends Paul Regent and Ken Bishop they caught 96 double figure fish in just 40 hours. So anyone visiting these waters can expect plenty of action. The fishing was fast and furious at times, so much so that at one point Kevin had two fish on at the same time. With Alan's help the first fish was netted. The other was a different story, it had got well and truly snagged in the weed. Bob seeing the difficulty brought round the hire boat and both he and Kevin went out to try and free the fish.
After a short time, the fish was freed and tore out into the open waters where Kevin was able to successfully net it. Oh, that was certainly a bit of fun. <sighs> Two fish on at once. <laughs> Amazing. While I was playing the first one, another rod went and uh, then it got weeded. Fortunately, Bob was quick with the boat, so we managed to uh, get both. Is that the other? Thanks very much for looking after it, Alan. Bit of fun, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when they come on fe feed at Fisherbill, they certainly come on feed. Lovely little fish, that one. Look at that. Beautiful. This one's about 15 pounds. And that one's probably about 10 or 12. <laughs> Lovely fish. I think these are going to grow very big. Nice shaped fish. Lovely. The fishing did not interrupt the local farmers. Milking time was milking time. A young English angler holidaying in the area had not managed to land a single fish. But after a word with Kevin, who recommended a fruity type bait, his luck changed. During the time the English angler started to catch fish, Bob had hooked and successfully landed a magnificent ghost koi in excess of 15 pounds, and this must rate as the best looking specimen caught during the trip. We 
it's about 15 pounds, beautiful fish. Just hold still, take a couple of shots.
Au revoir. Right, we're just going to run through the rigs that the three of us are using. This is Alan's rig. He's using an ordinary running lead, a swivel, a piece of tube to protect the line from the lead, a hook length of about 14, 15 inches nylon, a partridge Z2 hook, two sinking boilies attached by a half inch hair to more or less where the eye of the hook is. That's the rig that Alan's been catching his fish on. This is Bob's rig, a lead attached to a piece of tube which is pushed over the eye of the swivel so that if the lead gets snagged and the line happens to get cut and the fish lost this can break away. So there's a swivel, a nylon hook link of six or seven inches, a bent hook and a single sinking boilie coming off the hook roughly where the bend is. And that's the rig that Bob's using. This is the rig I'm using as a Christon Quicksilver snag leader attached to a swivel. It's a breakaway lead that can actually pull off of there should the fish get snagged. But in fact it's a fixed lead as far as the fish is concerned. A small piece of rubber to protect the line from the lead. Again a Christon Quicksilver hook link 12 inches long, a partridge cassian hook, a floating boilie attached by about a half inch hair. The reason I'm using the quicksilver is because we've got a lot of sharp reeds and rushes in the lake in front of us and we've lost a couple of fish because of it. And this is a new abrasion resistant line, it's absolutely super. The snag leader I'm using about three rod lengths long. That's how you've, there's three different rigs and they're all catching fish for us. Kevin joined Alan in his swim as he was playing a fish. Unfortunately, his line had snagged on another rod. The fish then picked up the other bait, and Alan was suddenly playing a second car. Bob, seeing the predicament, came over to give a helping hand. <laughs> now, I think it's just a, a, a wind knot. Oh, 
Between them, they landed both fish in the same net. Yeah. Not a recommended practice, but in the circumstances, they had very little choice. It's got to be a mid-20. Let's have a look. Some boilies coming out. That's a lovely fish. The beauty of an unhooking mat, if you get a lively fish like this, I'll tell you what's interesting about this fish, it's got a blue tag on the dorsal there. Raphael told us that uh, there's different coloured tags which help identify the fish which, where they came from and what weight they were. So uh, we must remember to report that one. It's got number one on it. Certainly is a nice fish. I think we'll weigh it up and uh, 
show you what it comes to. Pop it in the way bag. They certainly fight well here. Very lively fish. Scales are already zeroed. Yes, it's just over 25. We've already allowed for the weight of the sling, so it's about 25.4. Lovely fish. Very pleased with that one. Smashing. I think we'll just slip it back to fight another day. Here we go. Yep. Well, it's not doing much at the moment, it's just coming towards me. I hope it's a good one. We certainly had a lot of action. Plenty of doubles with the odd 20. It's just coming in slowly at the moment. Wind's blowing quite strong today. Not sure what direction this is. Raphael said that wind's been blowing into this bank for two months. I think it's probably a westerly. A carp are certainly all along this side. Whether they follow the wind normally or not, I don't know, but uh, with this grassy area that's been recently flooded, and the wind blowing into it as well. Obviously, the carp like it very much. Hello, Bob. Yeah. This one's not doing much. It's just sort of kiting. Yeah. This feels a good fish. guide it through those reeds. I feel the line grating all the time. This quicksilver's quite good on these reeds. That's a good fish, Bob. Got it? Yeah. Well done. Is it a good one? Yes, it's a good fish. Yeah, that's a 20. 20? Lovely. Great. I thought it was a good one because it's, uh, it's very slow and doggy. I've got you letting me pop it. Okay. Just put that down there. Lovely, thanks very much. Put him on the mat. Get that out of the 
the white. That's well into the twenties. Oh. I think we'll weigh it up. That might quieten it down a little bit. Very lively fish. Well, we're certainly getting some action. Everybody's getting lots of runs and lots of fish. I don't think we've got anything to complain about. Just zero the scales. It's bigger than I thought. I've got to take the weight of the sack, the sling off, but I think we can safely call that 26 pound. Have a look at the fish. Just check it's not got a tag. No. The fish is lively as this, you definitely need that unhooking mat. Well, Bob and Alan have just had a 20 a piece as well. So we've all got a 20 each in the last few minutes. Which is a nice end to our trip because we're just about to leave for England. And who can complain with three 20s, one each, plus all the other fish we've caught. Just put this one back. Lovely. Kevin and his two companions caught a total in excess of 950 pounds of fish in just three days, and many of these were over 20 pounds. attention of Bob and Alan that Kevin had not taken advantage of the showers available and as it was only time to drive home not wishing to share the car with them under these circumstances they took the matter into their own hands. Oh!